Hello guys, it's Jason here. Today we're going to go over all the films, or most of the films, that I've shot over the past years. But first, I want to go over a few things. Most films, when their ISO is at 160 or 100 or 200, they're finer grain, but they're not good for low light settings. Low light settings, uh, what's good for low light settings is 800 or 3200 ISO speed films and those have less grain or more grain actually um, yeah also Kodak usually has warmer tones orangish yellowish tones whereas Fujifilm has more greener cyan and magenta uh, tones. So let's start off with some of the black and white film that I've shot with the Kodak is a uh, Tri-X and T-Max. I think they're both 400 ISO speed. They're both fine grain and T-X is sharper than T-Max. T-Max has less contrast. I personally like to shoot on Ilford which I'll go over later but, but yeah I've shot with those films. I'm shooting with a few of them now for my photography class as well for black and white photos and developing those photos as well. Everyone's favorite Portra, Portra 160 and Portra 400 and Portra 800. They are everyone's favorite films. Portra is everyone's favorite films for the longest time, um, even till today. But they're so expensive. They have warmer tones like most Kodak films. They are pretty fine grain. They have good color saturation. They don't have good color saturation, no. I don't know. They have they have good color reproduction, and I just love the way the look of the films are on these Porsche 400 or 800. 800 obviously better for low light settings for for darker days or gloomy days. I notice a lot of New Yorkers people in New York shoot on Porsche 800. I'm guessing that's because the 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 weather is not very predictable. I'm guessing. My favorite film to shoot on is the Ultramax. It's the closest you can get to Portra films. They're more of a modern film. It's good in low, in low light settings for, uh, for, for flash or or stop action. So, Ultramax is good for stop action, low light. I personally have no reason to shoot on Ektar or Ektachrome, but Ekta, Ektar has one of the world's finest grain. It says it on the box itself. Ektachrome is also very good as well, but I would never use these two. I personally don't like low speed ISO films either. So Ektar has really fine grain as I said earlier, and it has very good, it has a lot of saturation and vivid color palette. Ektachrome was a film from a long time ago, no, I don't know if it's a long time ago, but uh, they discontinued it and they started making it again. There's also Kodachrome, I believe. Ektachrome, they brought Ektachrome back. Apparently it has good color reproduction as well. I do not have the film for Ilford HP5 or the Ilford Delta 400, which I like. I've been shooting Ilford HP5 since high school, which is like 10 years ago. I'm old, I guess. Uh, I've been sh I shot HP5 in my film class in senior year of high school, and I've loved the film ever since then. I shoot black and white every once in a while. I prefer color as my choice of poison and I do choose Ilford HP5 when I do shoot black and white. I shot this Delta 3200 for obviously low light setting. I was at a concert for one of my friends. Uh, he hired me to do a photo shoot during the concert. So I, I took this Ilford Delta 3200 and I shot some photos with it. Fujifilm, Fujifilm has a more greener tones like I said earlier. Um, and I shot a lot of Fuji in Korea when I went in 2017. I shot mostly Fuji because uh, the develop, the developing lab or the film shop had only Fuji in their stock in their inventory. So I shot mainly Fuji in Korea. This past year, when I went to 2022 to Korea, I did not shoot as much film as I wish I have shot, but. I like Fujifilm as well, it has a greener tone, the color representation is pretty good. Um, the Superior is also good as well for low light settings. The Lomo 800 has a 
very vibrant colors and good, very saturated colors as well. Also, I'm reading these off a note because I don't remember specifically. I do vaguely remember how these films turned out, but I don't remember the specifics on these films, so I am going over my notes. But this Lomo 800, I remember it being very vibrant and very saturated colors in the film. Also, 800 is good for low light settings. Lomo Chrome Purple, this is an interesting one. There's one film that I really wish I could shoot is the infrared uh, film that Jason from Grainy Days shoots. But I don't have access to that and I'm not spending a hundred or couple hundred dollars on one roll of film. So I also am not buying equipment to uh, shoot the infrared photos, but I do want to shoot it eventually. But Lomacomb Purple is the closest thing you can get to infrared film. It turns the blue into green the green into purple, yellow into pink, and red stays red. So this is a very experimental, interesting film to shoot with every once in a while. It gets old if you do it all the time. The main two films I shoot with uh, today and right now is the Ultramax because of the cheapness. I can't afford to shoot Portra, any ISO Portra, like constantly. I shoot about three to two to three to four to five rolls of film a week or every two weeks and I can't afford I, I guess I can't afford it but I I choose not to because Ultramax is pretty good too it's it does a good enough job for the street photography I do or any photography I do so Ultramax has great colors great warm tones um, which I like Ultramax is just an overall great uh, film. I used to look down on Ultramax before when Portra 400 was like $10. Now it's like way more, but Ultramax, good film. For now, unless film prices go down. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I have for today. I went over the films that I've shot in the past and the films that I like. I like most of these films. I, I stick with Kodak usually so and then Elford HP5 I've been shooting that as well for my photography class so thank you guys for watching click like comment and subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff I'll see you guys next time peace my desk is a mess right now oh and this bonus is a new book that I uh, just got in the mail and it's about an Italian I believe an Italian photographer who traveled to America and then put all the photos or the film rolls into a trunk and never opened it until recently and this is gonna be an interesting book to go over or to read or whatever you do with photo books you read them you see them and I'm excited for this photo book so yeah, there's a little bonus content right here.